Welcome. This is a video all about how I'm setting up the cooler for my minivan camper build. I'm using a thermoelectric cooler, but I will be doing a few things to improve its efficiency a bit, like adding insulation as well as a thermostat. This video follows the video about my kitchen boxes, and I've divided all the cooler footage into three videos to keep things clear. This is part one, which will cover finishing the plywood box and insulating it. In the second part, I'll be wiring up the digital thermostat to control the thermoelectric cooling unit and programming it. I've also made a plastic cover for the thermostat. I made a crazy time-lapse video, which will be part three of this video. When designing the kitchen on paper, I left half an inch of space under the cooler to store my cutting board. But that didn't leave enough room for my fingers to pull the board out. So instead, I'm going to be installing a push-to-open cupboard latch. This is the mechanism. It's made to be installed in a 10 millimeter size hole. The closest I have is a 3 eighths of an inch bit which is about nine millimeters. So I'm gonna to need to rasp the hole to open it up a bit enough to fit the mechanism in. This seems okay. Maybe I should have sanded some more. Well, I hope I never need to get it back out because now it's definitely in. Now I need to install it underneath the cooler. I pre-drilled some countersunk holes in a board, and I'm going to trim it to fit. I'm using an old IKEA cutting board that I already have, but I checked online and I can buy a new board the same size if I want. I'm installing it with screws, so even if I do need to get a different cutting board, I can move the wooden strips. This narrow strip is to keep the board straight in its slot and I'm drilling pilot holes so it's easy to get my screws in. And voila! A magic cutting board that appears at the push of a finger. When I decided to upgrade from a cooler with ice, I bought a thermoelectric cooler without realizing just how much power they draw. I'm not ready to invest in a compressor fridge yet, so in the meanwhile, I'm going to try it out with this cooler and see if I can improve it a bit. The first step will be to add some insulation. I can't just add a huge amount of styrofoam because I still need to get the fit into the space in the back of the van. I had some half inch styrofoam insulation left over from a different project, so that's what I'm going to use. There's also the plywood box itself, which adds another layer. Where I'll be putting the cooler, there will only be two or three inches of airspace between the cooler and the inside wall of the van. So I've decided to add another small fan to help move the warm air away from the outside of the cooling unit. So I've cut a one and a half inch hole on the side of the box and the fan will fit just inside. Next I'll be cutting a small rectangular hole for the on off switch. I need to position it so it doesn't interfere with the fan or with the thermostat. This will allow me to turn the cooler off if I'm driving around with nothing in the cooler or if I need to shut it down to save my batteries. Every kitchen needs a place to hang up a tea towel. But again, I don't want to have anything too big, so I made these little spacers that look like Cheerios. Those are going to hold the bungee cord away from the surface so I can tuck the towel in easily. Since I've already varnished the main box, I'm going to scuff up the wood a little bit so the glue grabs well. I only drilled a small pilot hole into the box, so that way I can use a regular screw to clamp the spacers down while the glue dries. While waiting for that, I can cut the hole on the front for the thermostat, making sure I place it so I have enough room for the thermostat and the wiring inside. This is the cover I made. The thermostat that I bought was a super cheap. It was $5 on Amazon, but it's just the circuit board with nothing to protect it. Because of the way the board is set up, 
the little LCD screen winds up recessed. So I've cut a little piece of quarter of an inch thick plexiglass to add to the cover, which will help a little bit. I could have put the thermostat on the side or made a simpler box or cover, but I was able to do this because I already had the materials and I knew how to do it. So I made this fancy cover with the push buttons integrated into it for setting the temperature. The cover fits into the hole like this. I go through the whole process of wiring up and I explain how to program it and set the temperature in part two of this video. Now that the glue is dry, I can take out the screws and drill out the hole in the box. The cord is then threaded through and pulled tight. And I'm going to staple it down. I have a time I happen to have the kind of stapler for, used for securing wiring, the kind with U-shaped staples, and that's what I'm using. Since I wanted the wooden lid and the cooler lid to lift in one movement, I decided that the simplest way was to just use the cooler's hinge rather than to try to fit a second hinge onto the box. To hide the gap at the back, which will be visible from the bed side of the cooler, I'm adding a strip of vinyl fabric that I found. I glued it to the inside of the main box, and I'll glue it into the lid as I attach the lid to the cooler. The next steps were to wire up the thermostat and to fit it into the cooler. It was really crazy. I felt like I was prepping for laparoscopic surgery. But we got it in with much swearing and the idea of filming it went right out the window. To attach the lid of the box to the cooler, I used foam board adhesive to glue the insulation to the wooden lid, then added a bead of spray foam. This was meant to fill the gap between the angled corners of the cooler lid and the square corners of the box lid. It was also supposed to glue the two lids together. The whole thing was then clamped tight with straps so the expanding foam would not push the lid off. Before applying the spray foam, I spritzed the surfaces lightly with water as the foam needs moisture to cure. I also covered the lower box with plastic and rubbed a thin coat of Vaseline onto the exposed edge of the wooden lid so that any foam that oozed out would not stick. It worked more or less okay. The box lid stayed where it was supposed to be and didn't glue itself shut, but doesn't seem to have glued it enough at the back edge. I get a bit of foam oozing out, but I can just trim that off. I was so worried about putting too much spray foam that I didn't put enough. But it's okay for now. I'll fix it later when, if it gets looser. The main part of the cooler is just sitting inside the wooden box. Nothing is glued. It's a tight enough fit that nothing moves, but in a pinch I could lift it out if I need to fix something. In the next video, I'll show the steps for wiring up the thermostat with its secondary fan and its on-off switch and how to set the parameters on the thermostat, plus the results of my preliminary tests of the cooler with its thermostat. So stay tuned, thank you for watching, and please subscribe and share these videos with your friends. Having them be seen by more people makes it all worthwhile.